Today I'm making something that fellow woodturner Tom Lohman posted a picture of on the AAW webpage a few years ago. He mentioned the segments are cut on a CNC and it's made with the bowl from a board method. Well of course I wanted to try it and I did. If you want to see how I made this, watch the whole video. And be sure to watch to the end. I have a very special guest that shows up. What I have here is a template. It's the profile of the segments I plan on making and gluing together. I know it doesn't look like a typical segment, but it's actually going to be a segment. So I'll take this template, which I have drawn on the computer, trace it onto this block, I'll bandsaw that shape out of there, and I'll glue it onto another block that I can use to fasten it in the milling machine and cut it. So let's get this over in the mill. And while that's being cut, I'll show you the process, and I think it's really going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to try to explain what I'm doing here and why it will work. I drew this lower line in a CAD program on my computer. This is the center. I rotated that line on that center 18 degrees. That gave me this line. This line and this line are identical. That means that this shape will fit right on top of that. So if I cut this piece, that shape will fit back into here. I'll make 20 of these because 18 degrees would take 20 pieces to complete a 360 degree circle. So what we're going to end up doing is taking different shades of wood. I have one more to cut out of a different piece of wood. I haven't cut them yet. This is actually, all of this stuff is the easy part. They all fit together quite well. The hard part is going to be when I glue them together. Figuring out a way to get them all tight. How many I can glue at one time, I don't know. I haven't done it yet. Getting ready to do that real soon. That machine's almost done cutting. And when it is, we'll start gluing all these together. Time to glue them together. I have all the pieces cut. I have paduke, mahogany, walnut, birch, and cherry. I put numbers on them so that I can get each section to be exactly the same. I've also machined some little fixtures that will fit in here and allow me to get clamps on it and pull it together. As I showed you before, this line is identical everywhere. So I just cut half of it on this side and another half on that side and we'll do this. So let's do it. It'll be lots of glue all over the place but I think we can get it done. These pieces fit together quite well but I like to get glue on both sides because once you clamp this many together I want them to be able to slide right into place. If there's any dry spots on the wood and they hang up, they're not going to slide. I cut flat spots on these little glue fixtures so I could get clamps on it. Once I got the clamps on there, you could see the pieces slide right together. Now I have three units that are glued together. I'm going to glue two together right now, and then I'll come back and glue the third one. The fourth one is going to be a little tricky, so I've left all five of those pieces loose. I'm using a band clamp right here to tighten this up, and that really worked good. There's the pieces that are loose. I'm going to fit those individually, one at a time. The last piece, I'm able to get it started, but it takes a little bit of persuading with a hammer to get it down in there, which is okay with me because it tightened all those joints together quite well. All right, I've got the board all cleaned up and made parallel to 0.83. I'm going to turn this lathe on and I'll explain what this lathe is and why I'm doing it this way. It'll be really noisy. I'll just explain it as I cut. The disc is mounted in my little metal lathe. The reason I'm using that is I have a compound on there. I have that compound set on an angle and I'll cut three rings from this disc. Because all the angles are the same, all I need to do is measure each ring and cut it to fit on the one that it glues against. Then everything should line up just right. 
And here it's cutting through the back side and it actually left a pretty clean cut. Okay, time to glue the rings together. I'm just going to do one at a time. We'll get it lined up, let the glue tack up, and then we'll clamp it. Well, it's all glued up and it sat all night, so it's ready to turn. This little block that I had glued onto the first piece, that's got a tenon cut on it. So I cut that tenon on there, then got this glued on and just centered it the rest of the way down. These walls, because of the way I cut it, they're almost a half inch. So we do have a little bit to cut away and I'm looking forward to that. So let me sharpen up a bowl gouge, get it mounted in the chuck, and we'll get to turning. All right, I've got it mounted up and turning about 1200 RPMs. The first thing I'm going to do is get that rim running true. I've got a freshly sharpened half inch bowl gouge. Let's cut a little bit on the inside now. See how this negative break scraper cuts right there. This is really starting to vibrate on me. So I'm going to work on the outside just a little bit more. I put this disc against here. It's just pressed against it. It's going to stop those harmonics. And when you get a, a piece that's made out of kiln-dried wood and it gets down to around a quarter, it really talks to you. So I'm pretty sure this will help smooth it up. And I've got just a couple little spots I want to clean up. Oh yeah, I can just tell by the sound it makes it. It's going to be much better. I think that's as, about as good as I can get it. So while we have it here, let's go ahead and sand it. Let me pull my dust collector chute down and we'll do that. Okay, so here's the, the spout for my dust collector. and I don't think it's blocking too much. To get that turned on, I'm going to sand in reverse at about 400 using 80 grit. That looks pretty good. All right, I have the back looking pretty good and I started the sanding on it. You can see now I have my steady rest attached here. One thing I want to do is take the bottom down just a little bit more. I think I have a quarter inch uh, to go and still leave some stock. Uh, but that 
pretty much means I want to use part of that paduk as the base. So I'm going to do that and I'm looking for all those joints to be tight and they actually look pretty good. I'm going to use this, uh, it's a little carbide with a negative rake grind on it. That feels pretty good. Probably go ahead and sand this. Alright, I'm happy with the inside. It feels pretty nice. So it's time to sand it. I'll start with 80 grit here and then I'll work my way through 400 both on the inside and the outside because I haven't finished sanding the outside. But I think it looks pretty good right now and I can't wait to get a finish on it. So, let me get my dust collector going and we'll do a little sanding and when we come back it'll be time to put some kind of finish on it. Okay, it's all sanded to 400. It's time to put a finish on it. The fact that I'm using Paduk in there is the reason I'm going to use spray lacquer. I've tried wiping on poly. The Paduk will bleed. I've tried uh, water-based polyacrylic. The Paduk will bleed. You can't even wipe it with denatured alcohol. It'll bleed. I go over it many times with compressed air and then I will just put a light dusting of spray lacquer on there. If you put a wet coat on there, the Paduk's going to bleed. So this is what I'll do is just, I don't even hardly want to see any on there because it's going to bleed. Okay, that's it. I'll do that three or four times before I start putting a heavy coat on. And I'll come back and show you the first wet coat that I put on. And it won't take long because this dries real fast. So I put a light dusting on it about three times, hit it with Scotch-Brite, and I'll go ahead and spray a good coat of lacquer on it now. Okay, that's good. I'll probably spray it uh, three more times, as well as the back, and then I'll be back and we'll get this set up and remove the little portion of the tenon off and we'll be done. Okay, I've got five coats of lacquer sprayed on and I wet and dry sanded between the second coat and the last coat. I'm using axe abrasive paste on it now just to bring that final finish to it. I like to use it over the top of lacquer or poly. It just adds a little extra depth. So we're going to start out around 400 RPMs, work it in. Alright, starting to shine now and what you want to do is make sure there's nothing else coming off before you go to the next step. Alright, nothing coming off on the paper towel. That looks pretty good. Go one step farther and use the polish restoring paste. Now I just keep this little piece of cloth in here and just get a little on there. It doesn't take too much. And I like to use cloth for this. This bowl doesn't have a lot of edges to catch on, so I'm comfortable using this. There it is. 
Hard to get much nicer finish than that. Hi there. Okay. I'd say it's time to get it off and call it done. Okay, it's all done. The little bowl inspired by fellow turner Tom Lohman. If you haven't seen any of his work, you should look it up. He does fantastic work. So it finished eight inches in diameter. It's three and a half inches tall. And here's the bottom side. And a good look at the inside. And I finished it with five coats of spray down lacquer and then acts of abrasive paste and polish. And it feels like a piece of glass. And I'm really happy with most everything except one spot. I was so disappointed, but it's actually Nothing I did, it's the nature of wood. You see the lighter colored wood here is mahogany. So we have paduk, mahogany, and walnut. And we have that coming all around. Then all of a sudden I get to this, that piece is out of the same board of mahogany. You see that lighter colored there, there's the mahogany. But the rest of it was dark. There's no control on a piece of wood. But you know what? I don't really mind it that much because that's why I love wood. It's not manufactured. It just comes out how nature makes it. So all in all, I'm really happy with it. I did say I was going to show you cutting the tenon off, but right when I was ready to do it, I had a visitor, a really good friend of mine. So I'm going to introduce you to him here shortly. And... Uh, to me, that, that'll be better than showing you cutting the tenon off. So, I hope you enjoyed the process of making this, because I sure enjoyed making so, it. So, I'll go ahead and introduce you to my friend. He comes around a lot, kind of likes it out here. His name is Spooky. He has a brother named Dinky. He comes out here, but he doesn't like getting anywhere near the camera. Hey. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. I enjoy reading them all. Thank you to all my current subscribers. It really means a lot to me. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. I do videos weekly. If you click that share button, you can share it with all your friends on social media. That would be great. It really helps the channel grow. Thanks again, and until the next time, see you later.